combo breaker. Yeah, combo breaker 2016, the big that's tournament. The, that's the big. Uh, like, isn't that like, that's like the biggest. Basically, Skullgirls? the biggest Skullgirls tournament of the year is yeah. in Chicago. That's for coming combo up. Breaker. Next combo breaker's coming mm -hmm. up. That's uh, Memorial Day weekend. That's gonna be one of the big tournaments of our next PR, right? It's gonna be like Mills Man Mate and then Combo Breaker. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe Smash and Splash three. Oh, really? That's gonna count. Yeah, that uh, next season will be April, May, June. So oh, okay. That's mm. June second through fourth. So Smash and Splash as well. Looks like uh, we got a match though. Uh, Town saves me a starting stage, and look at how right I was. It is Orange <laughs> Zero Suit Samus? Yeah. Um, Si Jakamu versus. It looks like the uh, the tag change is complete. It is going to be Lapis Lazuli <laughs> over here on the so right that's side. That's Steven Universe thing. Mm. All right, let's get down to business here. Um, Lapis Lazuli from okay, okay, we no <laughs> SDs. I thought we almost had one. Um, Lapis is known for in Chicago, like being one of those few players who will not allow Smashville in game one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's definitely true. He doesn't like people camping him on the, the Smashville platform. So um, what will happen is someone will strike FD, uh, someone will strike Lilat, he'll strike Battlefield, and uh, um, and what did I say, Smashville, and we'll end up on Town and City or we'll end up on like Lilat or Battlefield. Those those three those are the three stages you'll usually end up on. Is FD and Smash will certainly be striked. But anyway, um, it is now. Because Lizzie's turn to get some corner pressure in on Giacomo, but he's being so good with his movement, like yeah. you were saying in the preview. Giacomo is just all over the place, not really letting out to, I mean, in my bad, but he's Lazuli, get any type of read on where he's going to be. And Lapis just has to take that grab. That's all he can really get to start this offense with a good dash attack on the tech chase. And his KO meter's almost charged. Yeah, that's something that. Oh wow, that's running up and up smash. <laughs> okay. Ow. Yeah, so that, that's gonna even it up pretty much. And now let's see, uh, Jakamu kind of playing a bit more reserved, knowing that the KO punch was pretty close, and now it's it's completely here. That whiff B reverse could have been the KO punch, and now to have the reaction. Yeah. He's gonna just... tilt. Uh oh, this is scary. <laughs> okay, the dash attack. I'm gonna take it. That's a that's a good that's good enough here for for Jakamu for sure. But the thing is though, like if he shielded that, that would have been it for his stock. Although Lapis does like to hold that KO punch meter if he can, and then just get the really quick second stock. Mm -hmm. So him being greedy with a KO punch is not at all unfamiliar to players who have commentated his games in Chicago. But the whoa, yeah, that side B taking it. That that move is pretty strong. <laughs> This is going to be Lapis getting another quick little percent, and he can, you know, he can stay alive here. We haven't really seen... Oh, wow, going for the, the forward smash. I'm surprised we didn't see the upbeat. We haven't seen Jackma go for very aggressive edge guarding, so that can be like... Like, if you don't show aggressive edge guarding, you don't put the fear in a little max life and force them to adjust their recovery. So, like, mm -hmm. look how confident Lapis is in, just in center stage. Like, if you end up taking all of your... If you play a Little Mac in a set, and you take all of your stocks, like, off the top with regular KOs or something, you're just naturally behind because of the advantages Little Mac has. Okay, that... I, I thought that wasn't going to kill. I wasn't really going to question these, uh, <laughs> these punishes. Well, it worked out in the end. Yeah. So. I was saying if it didn't work out, I was going to question it, but... But, uh, Giacomo playing really strong right now. He ends himself going. He looked like he had a really sweet confirm in the back pocket, but he just kind of missed a little bit of the spacing on one of those one of those connections. Oh, wow. All right. Um, slowing down the pace of the game a bit is Giacomo. Um, he really wants to set the tone just by being mobile, mm -hmm. right? Right now he's just using that mobility to retreat. Doesn't want to overcommit. He knows his percent's very high. You can't eat too many more forward tilts like that. Yeah. Jakamu just kind of waiting it out, trying to get get some we can. Oh, that was a scary uh, forward smash. And that shield gets damaged so much. Like you cannot shield more than one of those. But is this gonna do it? Yeah. Yes. So that that patience definitely paid off. Uh, Jakamu waited till he got some that he, that he wanted. Got the grab. There you the go. That's the SS for you. <laughs> it's a pretty volatile matchup like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. Little Mac. It's pretty floaty, right? Mm -hmm. So that 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 is probably easier to get on Little Mac than most characters. Yeah, the uh, the auto links worked out definitely in Jakamu's favor. Taking that stock, taking that game. Mm -hmm. He was behind for a very pretty large portion of it. 
But in the end, uh, you know, that all that matters is the scoreboard at the end, and there you go. That's gonna be game one going to Connecticut here. Yeah. Um, someone who could actually use a flight <laughs> to Midwest Mayhem 8. Yeah. So let's see what happens game two. We know Naoto, or sorry, Lapiz can get a little bit tilted sometimes. I don't really anticipate he's gonna be doing a character switch though. Just because I think he's going to want to stick to his guns. Yeah. Like I was saying before, I know Lapis also uses corn a lot. I don't know if we'll see that, but... Mm -hmm. Especially because he was winning most of the game. Like, if it wasn't for that grab, I probably would have been in Lazuli's favor. Yeah. He was he was in great shape the entire time. Yeah. Like we said, he was like pretty close to finding a couple of those KO punch connections, too. Mm -hmm. So maybe if he can just like mentally note some of the shield habits that Jakamu is putting out there. That can put him in a good spot to like just raw KO punch in certain situations. Yeah. So there, there's a lot of there's a lot of thought that Luffy's can use in his adjustment here. And we we have the fortunate pleasure, I guess, <laughs> if you want to call it that, of commenting these little Mac games and just understanding oh, yeah. a little bit about how the character works. Yeah, I definitely from watching Luffy's play so much, I def definitely know a lot more about little Mac than I would have wanted to know. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, sounds like the stage is going to be Lilac Cruz. Um, this stage, for a Little Mac, makes a lot of sense. Some people would be like, no, but the tilting kills Little Mac's recovery. The tilting kills everyone's recovery, so you don't... It's not really just yeah. exclusive to you. Secondly, you can't hide from Little Mac on these platforms. That's, That's so important in the Little Mac matchup, because he's able to up smash all the way up to those platforms. Yeah. So you can't just, like, retreat to, like, the top left and right town and city platform or nothing. You can't retreat to the Smash World platform when it's off stage. You can't retreat to the top battlefield platform. There's nowhere to run. Wow, that floor is matched at 20%. <laughs> yup. This is the game we chose to play, man. Yeah. Like, here we go. Oh, wow. That up be barely even connecting at all. The Lilac Tilt might have actually messed with the way that, uh, the way that landed, but that grab just yeah. didn't want to work. And there was no punish either, so honestly, it didn't even matter. Yeah, in the end, we were kind of just in this uh, little early scrim of a situation here. Yeah. Oh, that's Whoa. how you're getting the punish. Almost fully charged, too. Alright, now Little Mac here, planting himself pretty firmly in the center of Lilac Cruz. Really does not want to give up any ground. But those jabs are going to give uh, gonna give Giacomo a little bit of breathing room. And then the return serve. Uh oh, Ooh, that was a, yeah. a spicy read. He just wanted that air dodge. Yeah, you usually see uh, Little Mac down to into up B, but I feel like he's a little bit too far to get. Yeah, I know you have to be closer to get the up B off the down tilt. A second hit of that forward smash gonna whiff thanks to Lilat again being so finicky. Oh, forward tilt does yeah. it. Forward tilt just the, the, the optimal punish right there, taking the stock. And again we see uh we see Lapi is taking that first stock. Um we'll see if his fortunes can favor him in this game as they didn't in game one. First of all he's gotta land, and this pressure from Jakamu is very strong, but again, wow. no punish. Oh, and this is the raw up the no punish though, too, yeah. There's been a couple whiff punishes in this game. Alright, a quick jab's coming out here from Lapiz. And, uh, he's not in a bad spot. Like, in the grab. Something I do like is that Jakumu hasn't been following for any of these, uh, like, air dodge baits. And those are, like, uh, devastating against Little Mac. Like, <laughs> if Little Mac, like, charges a, a smash attack, waiting for your air dodge, like, you're most likely dead. Yeah, that hurts a lot in the morning. Yeah. So, getting the side right there, and uh, Lapis running away with it, honestly. This, this is probably kill percent too, yeah. Oh, and there's that air dodge he was looking for for a long time, but in the end, he doesn't even need it. Yeah. Catches him on the right side with that side B. And oh. that's going to be the stock, even up this set. Yeah, that was a two stock, too, on top of that. So, definitely looking good. If you're... A Little Mac fan. Yeah, Little Mac uh, trying to make his way to winner's finals here at PG Key to Midwest Mayhem 8. That match wasn't even three minutes long. Mm -hmm. Compare that to the... Uh, I feel like we finished those two games in the time it took the first <laughs> winner's semi... The first game of the first winner's semis. Yeah. So, we're moving right along here. Uh, we got we had all the time in the world to watch some awesome Smash Brothers for Wii U. So, game three... These two, it looks like they're very firmly entrenched in the characters they pick. Yeah. I don't, I don't think we're going to see a counterpick. 
Um, stage could be up in the air. We could see a battlefield. We could see a Smashville. Um, I think best of five means no bans, though. Right? Yeah. 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 That means that means that. no bans. So that means Smashville oh. will have to come into play. It is one ban. One ban. And then no DSR. Modified DSR. Modified DSR. Okay, so that means um. If it goes to a game five, that means counter pick advantage is even bigger. Is what Malphi DSR means. That means if you if you're not aware of what DSR is, let me explain it because uh, sometimes I can get carried away when talking about TO stuff. It means Dave's stupid rule. I don't actually know who Dave was. <laughs> Dave was a melee player. Uh, thank you, production. Um, and basically, what that is is you can't go back to a stage that you won on in a set. Mm -hmm. um, that matters a lot, particularly in melee, because like in melee. The meta is so advanced that we've gotten like to the point where people know like exact matchup spread numbers per stage. Yeah, and, like some sometimes. So like, like Marth will body spaces on Final Destination yeah. example. Thing like that's a very very simple thing because you can chain grab without any platform ruining it. Um, so like having not like being able to ha fight Mewtwo King in a set where like you know he can only go to Final Destination once as Marth mm -hmm. is very important. Um, the modified version is you can only you can't go to the last stage you want on. So let's say um, Giacomo here he won on town and he really likes town. Um, or no, no, okay. Let me let me reset the example. So Giacomo won on town. Uh, Lilat uh, Lapis won on. Uh, Giacomo's favorite counter pick is um, let's say battlefield. He wins on Battlefield. Uh, Lapis wins on Final Destination. So, um, that means that uh, Giacomo can't go back to oh, Battlefield, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. but he can go back to Town City if he likes. Okay, I actually didn't know that. Yeah. Mod modified DSR. That's interesting. That's basically how that works. Oh, uh, I, I thought I mentioned it very briefly at the beginning, but there is a little hiccup that actually... this You know this came into play in the Zero upset, right? So... Um, Battlefield and Dreamland exist as the same uh, stage in the stage list, right? Mm -hmm. That that was pretty well known. What might not have been known, or at least what might not have been realized, is that DSR applies the same to both. Oh, okay. Really? So, um, if one player were to win on Battlefield, that means that game three he couldn't go to Dreamland because he won on Battlefield. Battlefield mm -hmm. Dreamland are considered the same. That came into play in the Zero upset versus Lutai because Lutai won on Battlefield and then went to Dreamland Game 5, which Zero technically could have said no and then forced a different stage. Mm -hmm. Which, uh, you can see how those sort of things add up. And, and Dreamland low ceiling certainly came into play <laughs> yeah. with some crazy raid shenanigan combos. And if uh, Zero didn't lose to Lutai, that would have been a completely different tournament. But anyway, uh, Sort of theory crafted my way here to the right stage we're gonna end up on, which is yeah. Battlefield for Game Three. Nice transition. Was it though? <laughs> Was it really? All right, getting that little jab. <laughs> Speeding up the uh, the Jelly Puff counter. Um, one of my favorite bits of Wi-Fi tech. But anyway, here we go. This is uh, Battlefield already coming out to a hot start here. Low Mac. That up smash, man. That, that that move hurts whenever you see it. Again. It doesn't matter what percent they're at. It, it all, hurts it me hurts. to watch it hit someone. Yeah. It's just like. I cringe. It's painful. Oh wow, that that is a scary. He, I'm surprised he caught that that ledge. That 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 angle got messed up. Me too, man. Oh my goodness. So Giacomo honestly had a great start to the match. Well, uh, Lapiz got off to a good start. But it was a good attempt at edge guard. I mean, mm, he was very close to finishing off that stock. Yeah, and honestly, that's what that's what you want to see. Uh, Giacomo do more. You want to see Giacomo aggressively limit. Uh, Lapis's options because Little Max, one of the easiest characters in the game to edge guard, and ZSS is excellent at edge guard characters. Oh yeah, indeed. It's kind of like that Bowser we saw from Percy, where like you when you have these characters who are super big heavy hitters, and then if they like, if you make like one mistake, they can just finish your stock. Um, oh no. You want to take away the neutral from them, but I guess uh, Jakumu kind of overextending a bit, and that's gonna cost him his stock, and that's gonna cost him oh, game man. three, dude. What? Dude. Little Max is a pretty cool character. I think so. That was a pretty cool match. Ow. <laughs> oh my goodness, that was so painful. That's that just one of those great. moments where like, okay, so Giacomo like SDs. He's just like, okay, I gotta clear my head. I gotta clear my head. And then he just get hit, he gets hit by one down tilt. It's like, 
Okay, I'm, my head is the opposite of cleared. How do you recover from that much tilt at any one given moment? Yeah, like, that's if, actually terrible. If, you, if you're Jokamu, I think you gotta, like, take a minute. You gotta take a breath. You gotta be like, <laughs> oh my god, that hurt take a step outside. so much. Stand up. It's like raining, isn't it? You could, like, <laughs> go walk out in the rain for a second. It's raining here in Chicago. Yeah, I mean, that... Yeah. It's a perfectly appropriate time to walk in the rain is when you SD and then get down tilted once and lose a set or lose a game three. So that was a great that was a great uh, recognition from Lapiz though, mm -hmm. knowing like, the tools that he had and like not even letting. <laughs> yeah, you have to be super aware. Be, like, doing That's why Lapiz will always save that KO punch though. Like, yeah. He, He'll like he'll get the KO punch and then he doesn't even matter like if he loses it. He yeah. just wants to always have that opportunity to take a stock one and then immediately take a stock two. Mm -hmm. I mean yeah, he didn't so. technically take the stock one. The stock one was given to him, and then he just aggressively took the second one. So yeah. So no matter what you think of the fairness of that, it's really well played from Lopez. Mm. And like you like you were saying though at the start of game three like. Giacomo, he wasn't taking advantage of the fact that if you get Little Mac off stage, you should be dead. Yeah, pretty much. And if you miss those opportunities, that is on you a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, like we saw in Game 2 of Geist versus Percy, uh, the Bowser versus Bayonetta match, where yeah. the Bowser just didn't get to play neutral at all. Like, that's just something that can happen in those low-tier matches, where you just you can take advantage of a low-tier's vulnerabilities to the point where it just feels like, oh man, I, just, I can't play this game. Yeah. That's, that is by definition why they're low tier, is that they have <laughs> vulnerabilities like that that can be easily exposed. And so that's what Giacomo needs to do in game four, is just take away options, take away any chance for Lapis to be in that neutral where he can get that opportunity in the first place. Yeah, so a good way to put it. Yeah. I mean, if Giacomo was waiting on some coaching, I mean, I think that... Yeah, right there. <laughs> oh, man, got the stream Just up. Turn, turn up the stream a little bit. That's that's the coaching like, you need. Yeah, now I got it. <laughs> All right, so we'll see how the next game goes. The stream must have coughed on me. Must have heard me. He hit the he hit the A button. <laughs> All right, let's go. Get into it. Game four. Uh, I didn't hear what stage we might be going to. Okay, running it right back. Battlefield makes a ton of sense. Let's get down to business. To defeat the Huns. <laughs> Someone, I, I I said let's get down to business on uh, commentary at Civil War, and they made the same pickup. <laughs> uh, I was so happy. It's the little things, man. All right, here we go. Game four. Giacomo has got to win this to make it to winner's finals to fight uh, Sonics. Yeah. Um, you can say the same, though, of course, about Lapiz. And he's got ZSS oh pinned. There's not a lot of moves that can just beat them. the ZSS down beat. That's so much priority. Mm -hmm. but that's a, a painful way to do it, too. Like, there's not a lot of moves that can punish it so hard. Oh, I'm dropping that, that uh, punish right there. All right, slowing it down. And that's the thing, like, I know ZSS is a fast character, and you want to be able to put on a lot of pressure, but you really don't want to be throwing hands with Lil Mac. No, like, no one wants to be throwing hands with Lil Mac. He's so strong. Like, if you're going blow for blow with Lil Mac, you're probably going to lose. And, okay, he's going to go for that ledge cancel. That is nice tech that Lil Mac has in the back pocket. If you go for those jabs on the corner, you will typically just fall off if they're shielding. It makes it very safe. Mm -hmm. And then just run up! KO yeah. punch! This looks familiar technique! <laughs> yeah. Alright, immediate oh. nair. Yeah, now that that happened because it was a misspaced back air, and uh, P is so good at getting any type of punish. That confirmed, though. That was 44%. Oh my goodness, Lapiz is on fire. Yeah, this is not looking pretty. We're not going to see a KO punch end the game, but uh, I don't know. We might see Smash Attack in the game or Side B. All right, okay, another opportunity here for Giacomo to take that stock with an aggressive uh, flip kick, but not going to get it. Yeah, these back guys have not been working out for Giacomo. The oh, up good. Tilt's good. Yeah. All right, going to go for another up smash there out of the Paralyzer, and I don't know how much I agree with that again. Like these forward, They look like a pretty easy forward smashes for me. What like up these? Well, maybe not on Battlefield, you don't want to go for that beat, but, but yeah. We'll have to see how it works out, though. Um, KO Punch online. Alright, we got a 
Luppy is he's trying to pin himself no. in the corner again. <laughs> Watch out! Doesn't even need it! Not gonna kill him. Yeah, and this is Jakumu's uh, last winner stock. And Let just as you yeah. said it, there it goes. That is gonna be another two stock here for Lapiz Lazuli, aka Naoto. I'm gonna take a 3 1, move yeah. it on to winner's finals here at PG Key to Midwest Mayhem 8. It's gonna go up against Sonics. So, and you know, that. They both look like they're on fire right now. Yeah. So that that that'd definitely be one to look forward to, but I'm pretty sure we're gonna get to lose a match before we get into that. Mm. So we're gonna have to wait a little bit until we see that that matchup. Remember, we still have Locust. 